<laughs> Praise the Lord. Back to Dr. Hat here, a.k.a. Brother Liberty Jr. Brown says, we turn our Bibles to Leviticus chapter 11. We'll be looking at verse 37. And it reads, And if any part of their carcass fall upon any sowing seed, which is to be sown, it shall be clean. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, to the admission, to the application, to the distribution of this great work. Thank you from the greatest book that man could ever possess. I prefer this God's work. We give God all the honor, all the glory, all the praise in the precious name of his son, our Lord and Savior. Just praise the Lord, David. <laughs> 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 Brothers and sisters, in Leviticus chapter 11, it opens up where uh, Jehovah God is giving Moses some um, divine instructions, uh, differentiating uh, certain types of animals, uh, animals that are clean, animals that are not clean, fishes that are clean, fishes that are unclean. And he's making this distinction to uh, uh, Moses. And, and, and in doing so, that we got the, the unclean animals, fishes, or the clean animals and fishes. And then when we look to verse 29 of Leviticus chapter 11, he's now um, speaking about these unclean animals. When he says in verse 29, these also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, the weasel and the mouse and the tortoise after his kind, and the ferret and the chameleon and the lizard and the snail and the mole. Verse 31, these are unclean to you among all that creep. Whosoever doth touch them when they be dead, shall be unclean until evening. So if you touch any of these unclean animals that are dead, you're going to be unclean. Verse 32. And upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, these animals, unclean animals are dead, the fall, it shall be unclean, whether it be in any vessel, uh, 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 like a a vessel like a, a, a farming implement of wood or raiment, your clothes or skin or sack, whatsoever vessel it be, wherein any work is done, it must be put into water. So when it touches any of these articles of clothing or articles of uh, uh, tools, touches these dead animals, dead, unclean animals, it must be put into water and it shall be unclean until evening, so it shall be cleansed. And this is the way that you clean it. You put in the water, the, 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 the thing that's touched the dead, unclean animal, and then it'll be cleansed. But once it touches the dead, unclean animal, it's unclean. Verse 33, and every earthen vessel whereunto any of them falleth, Whatsoever is in it shall be unclean, and ye shall break it. So sometimes, you know, if it's the, like the farming equipment, if it touches this dead, unclean animal, just break it. It, it won't. It can't be clean no more. Verse thirty-four: Of all meat which may be eaten, that on which such water cometh shall be unclean. And all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean. And so, the, the whatever the plates or your cups that touches these dead, unclean animals, it, it's it's unclean. And everything went upon any part of their carcass, the dead, unclean animal's body, falleth shall be unclean. If it touches, it contaminates the thing. The dead, unclean body, when it touches whatever, it contaminates the thing that touches and it becomes unclean. Whether it be oven or ranges for pots, for they shall be broken down, 
for they are unclean and ye and shall be unclean unto you. So when these dead animal body parts touches anything, especially uh, uh, ranges, ovens, it's broken down. Don't don't take that. It's broken because it's unclean. Because it touched the dead, unclean body. Nevertheless, a fountain or a pit wherein there is plenty of water shall be clean. So we've got this well, clean water. Watch this. But that which touches their carcass, this clean water, shall be unclean. So we see that these dead animal carcasses, these dead animal bodies, when it touches anything, it touches it, it contaminates it, and it becomes unclean. But then we look at verse 37. And if any part of their carcass, these dead, unclean body parts of these animals, fall upon any sowing seed. So if you're planting seeds on the ground, and there's that dead, unclean body part of the carcass of that dead, unclean animal, and if it touches the, 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 the seed that you're going to plant, the seed that you're going to sow, watch it, which is to be sown, it shall be clean. So we see here that the dead animal body part, the carcass, when it touches the, the seed that's to be sown in the ground, that seed is clean. You know, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 8, verse 11, this is the parable. The seed is the word of God. And, and we see also uh, the apostle Peter in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. He says, being born again. Being born again is when you believe on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you're saved. And once you're saved, you're always saved. Being born again, not of a, 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 a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. The word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And so we see when, when, when in, in Leviticus chapter 11, when that dead, unclean animal body part, when the kingdom of darkness with its death, when the kingdom of darkness with its corruption, with its contamination, it can't overcome the word of God. The word of God overcomes death. The word of God overcomes corruption from the kingdom of darkness. The word of God overcomes condemnations from the, the, from the kingdom of darkness. Because it's clean, the word of God. And, 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 and we, we, we also see in Acts chapter 13, when uh, a great man of God, a preacher of the gospel of grace, uh, the apostle Paul, when he was preaching the message, the, the gospel of grace, and in Acts chapter 13, it records how a bunch of uh, religious hecklers started cursing at uh, the Apostle Paul and started blaspheming him, making fun of him and contradicting him and mocking him. And then the, the Apostle Paul and his um, traveling companion, who's also a gospel grace preacher, uh, Barnabas, they turned around to these, uh, these hecklers and, and they said, hey, it was necessary for us to give you the word of God. But you don't want to have nothing to do with it. And seeing that you don't want to have nothing to do with it, and seeing that you felt yourself, un judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, judge yourself unworthy of eternal life. And so we see the, the apostle um, uh, Paul and, and his, uh, uh, his companion, Barnabas, a gospel grace preacher, they, they equated the word of God with everlasting life. And so they said, since you felt yourself unworthy uh, 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 of everlasting life, of eternal life, we went and preached it to somebody else. And so we, we, we see when, 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 you, when the, the word of God, the, 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 that's that seed, uh, when, when, when th there is nothing that the kingdom of darkness can do or, or, or say against the word of God. 
because the word of God overcomes the kingdom of darkness. It's not the kingdom of darkness that overcomes the word of God. It's the word of God that overcomes the, 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 the kingdom of darkness and it remains clean. And so when, when the word of God is sown in your heart, when the word of God is sown in, in your in your mind and the word of God is sown in, in, in your soul. It, 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 it's going to live and it's going to abide forever and it is going to be clean because the, the word of God cannot be overcome by the kingdom of darkness. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his constant. You. May the Lord give you his peace. And I commend you all to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build up an inheritance to those who are sanctified. In the precious name of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. And now to him that is able to keep you from, from present you for us in the presence of his glory, glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forevermore. Praise the Lord, amen. When the word of God, when the gospel of grace this is sown in your heart. <laughs> that 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 incorruptible seed. <laughs> it lives and abides forever, and it is clean. And so are you. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> I thought I clicked it off. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs>